All right, guys. So today we are doing everything to finish the 650i. So if you haven't been watching the videos, this is E63, E64, E63 being the coupe, E64 being the convertible. And this car needs transmission fluid changed and the filter. Are we doing mechatronic sleeves? No, because that doesn't have any problems with that. Uh, we could quickly do that down the road if it ever has that issue, uh, but we don't know. This car has had the fluid change before at some point. It is the red fluid, but it is very dirty, so it hasn't been very soon. And then we're gonna be putting new oil and filter on it. We have new upper radiator hoses for this, because these are brown and getting on the brink of explosion. We also have a new convertible top motor, but I think we're gonna make a whole different video about the convertible top, all its functions, how to fix it, this or that. I think that'd be a good video for a very select few people, but those select few people will be very grateful I made that video. So when they have an issue, they know how to fix it. All right, so we have a 3 8 ratchet, Allen number 10. Gonna drain it, hopefully they're not wearing it. Open your eyes real wide whenever you take this drain plug out. Maybe you'll get a face full of it. Ew. So you can see, you might be able to see with that camera, but you can see the color of it. It does have red fluid, but it is brown, which means it's dirty, it's been there a long time. And doesn't smell the best, it doesn't smell burnt. It's just nasty, right? So what the deal is, if you let this get too nasty, it will clog up that filter. And then in worst case, it will clog up the screens in the solenoids. And if it cannot lubricate properly the mechatronic sleeves, it'll also break that rubber down on those and cause all kinds of failures. Um, in the valve body, if you run dirty fluid in it and it gets kind of gritty and nasty, it's gonna grind on that aluminum valve body and cause all kinds of wear on the TC valve, all kinds of issues, it's gonna starve it from fluid and it could break the drive drum, it could break the reverse drum, it could break all kinds of stuff. So, we will see. Has somebody done the pan on this? Well, we're gonna see that when we take this down so we can't find a date on it and see what year it is. Your little impact out. Now we ordered the ZF pan, the real ZF pan with the bolts. It showed up here without the bolts. Sweet, huh? But I do have a whole bunch more of these bolts if we do happen to break one or have a problem. Uh, we could easily relieve that. Is it going to instantly break all the, all the bolts off? No, it will not. And before we take this off, let's take this little guide off. This thing is missing the underbelly pan. So there's two, what is that, seven? I believe that's seven mil bolts to hold that on. Okay, so I'm gonna dump a bunch of this crap out of here. Wipe this off just a smidge. We feel it could bring you over here on the workbench and take a look at it. You can't really see too much. There's no sediment at all on the magnets. Oh, very little bit. Your average dirt and stuff, there's no chunks, there's no problems at all. So it shouldn't be a big deal. So what we're gonna do here is set this somewhere 
and until we're done with this, because we don't want to do, oh, I'll dribble over my floor. What we don't want to do is toss it and have something be a little different and we can't use a new one. So we're going to essentially take this, what was the torque specs on these bolts? I mean, I would do all these about seven foot pounds myself. I don't know what they're calling for. It's in a different language. Here's the filter in here. Take the cap off like so. We're gonna go over here and stick our finger in a little bit of the training fluid that's dumping out. And then put around the O-ring. Wipe a very fine, fine, fine layer. This has like an O-ring that seals it to the car. And that's it. So we're gonna go get a couple of bolts to hold it in in our hand. Maybe four. Now the Mechtronic sleeves, you have to drop the valve body down. There's bigger bolts that take it out. And you gotta replace the little sleeves that go between the transmission itself and the uh, valve body. Okay. A little hole up there. That's so all we're gonna do is put a bolt in the back here to hold it. And we're gonna go around the front and we're gonna push it up on there so it holds it to it. All right, there. There it goes. And all we do is push that oil ring on the filter up into the transmission hole. And essentially we're just gonna reinstall all the bolts. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take our Allen key number eight and make sure the drain plug's tight, boys. And it is, we got one little click out of it. Next thing we're gonna do is take our Allen key number, Allen key number 10, this is Allen key number eight. And I'm gonna go up here and open Open that, drop that on the floor. I meant to do that, right? Now usually I tell you guys, don't be a dumbass and always check your fill plug first. But we did not do that on here. So we're going to grab our breaker bar, which probably is not gonna fit in there. So we're gonna leave that. Let's just go ahead and grab our pipe. <laughs> if you ever put that on, put it on way too tight. Okay, there's our fill plug right there. So there we're on the workbench. And then we're gonna start filling it up. So remember, on this operation, we get our pump. You have to put three quarts in. Pump three quarts in before you start it. If you start it before you put oil in it, it's going to ruin the transmission. It's gonna be running dry. It usually welds the clutch packs together. Then you're in trouble. So let's go ahead and do that right now. 
Then we're gonna start it. We're gonna put the last four, four and a half quarts in. All right, we're just gonna fill it up, watching the side. Whoa, buddy. Watching the side of that. Like, I don't mind doing this. We could do it so quick nowadays. It's not that big of a deal. But if you're laying on your back doing this and you're in a very clean shop that you don't get any oil on the floor, this is going to be a, she's going to be a little bit of an issue because you're going to get oil everywhere. We can pump a quart in this thing in about, well, you'll see here, about a minute, a little less than a minute. Maybe Philip could zoom in there on the bottle and see that going down on the side, maybe, on a little sight glass. There it is, one in. We got two more, and we let it all down to start it. So everything's in, it's filled up. It's probably not, we wanna make sure it gets up to temperature in case it needs to purge any out. It should be up to temperature by now. It has not purged any out. We ended up with not quite seven quarts in it, right? So uh, let me go ahead and replace the plug. And wipe that off. It's tough on this one because the exhaust is right next to where you got to get into. I'm gonna slide that right in there just like so. If you turn the engine off right now without the plug tight or without the plug in it, it's gonna pour fluid to the tune of about four quarts all over your floor. All right, snug, a little bit more, and that is it. If you go any more than that, you're doing a disservice to yourself, and only hurt yourself. And then show them the mess on the floor here, what's going on. That's actually what we consider a pretty good, pretty good spill. I mean, the minimal spill you're gonna have. If you don't have We're gonna go ahead and change the oil in this 650i. Uh, so this will be the same for all N52 stuff. We did this a while back, so we're going to piggyback this video along with other stuff. This thing is still dripping oil too, so that's that's sweet for both sides. Um, we're going to go get the, the bin over here. We're going to pull hopefully the drain out, probably the whole thing is going to come out. And then we need to drain the actual oil itself. All right, let's go ahead and break drain plug. If you have a shirt you want to keep, always take a step back. I say it's been a while since so that's been changed. See how dark it is. Oh, it smells delicious. This makes you want to just take a bite. It smells like gasoline very, very strongly. Wipe everything off here. Tilt to the side. We're going to go and undo our filter housing. Let's go ahead and buzz this loose too. That was like barely tight. go by our hand. Oh, nasty. We're just gonna set that right there and let that drain upside down. Let's just uh, reach up in there and try to pull that filter off maybe. 
This one actually came off. You see it is separating. And it weighs a ton. Holy cow. Where's this baby made? Where's she made at, boys? Let's see. Wix. Another Wix. All right, let's go ahead and put the plug back in. We stuck the oil filter in, put the new seal on, but we're not torque it down yet. Okay, let me get our big ratchet. It's 24 mil. I'm telling you, tighten this down. It's loose. It's loose. It's loose, and it'll stop. Right there, it stopped. Tiny bit more and that's it. Do any more than that, you're just hurting yourself. Hurting yourself or whoever the next one is. So yeah, I don't know. This car, so what the deal with the oil leak was, we sprayed everything off. We can't really see anything wrong. We ran it for probably 45 minutes in the lift. There was not a drop of anything anywhere. It's been sitting here. It's been sitting here and it's got drips on both sides. And it hasn't dripped that much on the on the mat, just a little bit, and then it spreads out. But stuff's like hanging off. I don't like that. Unfortunately, to fix that, you're probably looking at you need to redo the valve cover gasket, timing chain gasket on both sides, probably the vacuum pump seal on this side, and probably the alternator bracket on this side to get it totally stopped. Is it worth, is it leaking bad enough to do all that? Since it barely ever drips on the floor, I don't know. I mean, well, I'll talk to the owner about that. Um, is that a job we want to do right now with having all these poor stuff to do? Not really. Um, so I don't know. We might put it at a later date. We'll see what they want to say about it. One thing we do have to do this thing today, which won't be on this video, is going to be the uh, control arms. Control arms in this thing are totally shot. So if you wanna see that video, this is the same control arm set up as a E66, E65, uh, 7, 750, 760, 745, and all that mess. So if you're interested in that, that'll be the next upload. And then let me see what we do on this channel after that. Uh, we have a convertible top video, show you guys to do that. Geez, I guess we're working on E46 next on this channel. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.